if you've got no passport you are officially dead so he's talking about the passports that are expired it is not only the passport that has expired but the person who is there who doesn't have an official passport has only expired he himself is dead so in order to understand this part you need to have a sound knowledge of what hitler was and what were the gas chambers and how jews were treated by hitler even in his dream he did not have a place to live in he i mean to say the refugee hello everyone i am dr shalini professor of english vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence mysore today we are here to understand one of the poems prescribed by university of mysore for first sem bca we are going to understand about the refugee blues today so let us begin our session let us see what is there in today's session so we are going to start with refugee blues and in today's session we are going to understand about the poet then we are going to understand the title also the theme of this poem we are going to understand the summary then we'll move on to the poetic devices at last the conclusion so let us begin with the introduction of the poet so he is w h auden he has written this poem and he was one of the most important poets of the 20th century his poems actually have a very important political uh, messages you can say okay so he also was considered as a social poet because there were lot of messages to the society he believed that the human spirit survives the best in atmosphere of tolerance and compassion so tolerance is what a human being must have in order to lead a very happy life at the same time he should be compassionate towards his fellow beings is what he believed and that was the message he used to give in his poems some of his best known poems are actually spain and mercedes bu arts so these are the famous poems of w h auden to begin with the title so this title that is refugee blues tells us a lot of uh, information it gives us a lot of information about the refugees uh, so this musicality uh, is very conspicuous in this uh, title so this tells us about the situation of jews during the world war So the definition of this word refugees is uh, somebody who is who has been forced to leave their country in order to escape a war or maybe a prosecution or a natural disaster anybody who has a good knowledge of the situation of jews during the second world war uh, that is during the hitler's uh, time then only they can understand this poem very easily so you need to have a little background knowledge about the hitler's time so let let us now begin with the theme of the uh, poem so this refugee blues that is written by w h auden actually talks about the harsh realities of a war there are more, many poems that have been uh, written uh, in memory of these uh, wars or the situation of jews so everything but uh, this stands apart this actually remains as a memorable one so the uh, theme of this uh, poem is actually loss suffering change or something like this okay so auden is trying to convey the wastefulness of a war so how useless a war can be is what auden is trying to say over here so let us see what is the plight of the people over there to start with the poem say the city has 10 million souls some are living in mansions some are living in holes yet there is no place for us my dear yet there is no place for us so here you can just observe that when the poet talks about this city so he is caught in some city an unknown city you can consider okay so he doesn't name the city so that is that can be considered as an unknown city for the poet you can also observe the rhyme scheme here souls holes they both rhyme whereas this doesn't rhyme so you can give a rhyme scheme for this i'm just telling you this you can follow the rhyme scheme later so this is the rhyme scheme that is there okay so this is the first stanza so what does the poet tell in first stanza this city has 10 million souls by the meaning by the word souls he means that people okay it has 10 million people but 
some are living in mansions some are rich he is showing that some are rich so they are living in mansions some are living in holes so they are not as rich as them so they don't live in mansions they are living in holes means a means maybe a very small uh, place of dwelling or maybe a small hut or maybe a very small place to live in which has only a roof on it okay so some are living in holes yet there is no place for us so he is talking about themselves their family okay there is no place for us that means he neither has a mansion nor can live in a hole so this is what he mentions so there is no place for us so he means something there is some inner meaning for this there is no place for us by these words he means something uh, very deep okay let us understand what it is once we had a country so before he had a country that means now he is forced to leave that country why and we thought it fair before they were living in a country and they thought yes everything is fine look in the atlas and you will find it there so he is talking about the country so this country where there was a geographical location he is talking about a geographical location there was a physical location before but now there is no place for them you check in the atlas at least a place where you can find all the maps all the places on the that is the uh, printed form of a globe so there you can see that the country which they were living in that could be found over there so you will find it there so the country the person who this a refugee who was living in a country you can find that on the atlas you can find this in the atlas we cannot go there now so this person is telling that he cannot go there now he has been a refugee he is forced to come out of that country because of some war or some situation wherein he cannot live there okay so we cannot go there now my dear we cannot go there now so he is telling the readers that he is not able to go back to the country because he is forced to leave that country because of some situation in the village churchyard there grows an old yew it's a kind of a tree you can say okay so in that churchyard there was one uh, old tree every spring it every spring it blossoms a new so it has seen many winters and many springs okay that means there it has been living there for a long time okay from it has been it's very old the tree is very old it has been there for a long time old passports can't do that my dear old passports can't do that that means he is comparing this tree to the old passport a tree can shed its leaves and take new leaves it can grow new leaves whereas passports cannot do that once the passport is old it is of no use okay tree till it has life it is it can survive till it has life it can live further it can see many seasons but passports it is not like that okay once the passport is has expired it is gone you have to get a new one issued so this cannot be like a tree it is the opposite it cannot live okay so this is what the poet is trying to say let us move on to the next para the consul banged the table and said consul is the uh, authority that is uh, related to renewal of passports and all okay so something like uh, the office that is there to issue the passport the consul banged the table and said if you have got no passport you are officially dead so he is talking about the passports that are expired it is not only the passport that has expired but the person who is there who doesn't have an official passport has only expired he himself is dead so in official records the person who doesn't have a passport is dead is what the consul says but we are still alive my dear but we are still alive so this person is still alive he is not dead but on official records he is dead but he still has life so that is the pathetic condition the refugees are facing in their own country because of the war so that is the wastefulness of war the poet is talking about went to a committee they offered me a chair so he goes to the concerned authority to speak they gave me a place to sit asked me politely to return next year so they told him please do come the next year because maybe the time is already over to apply for the passport or maybe there is some other reason for them to tell him to come the next year or maybe they don't want to work so there are many reasons that they tell the, this person this refugee to come the next year return the next year so they asked him to go back and come the next year he was offered a place to sit but not given a place to live there okay so this is what the irony he is talking about here 
but where shall we go today? He has asked them to go now. But where should we go today? My dear, where shall we go today? So there, they have no place at all. The reason they came and they have approached the concerned authority is that they don't have a place to live. They don't have a place to go back. Okay, past they had a place, in future they don't know, present, he is talking about the present. Where shall we go today? So that is what the question of the refugee is. So he is perplexed, he is confused where to go. Came to a public meeting, the speaker got up and said, if we let them in, they will steal our daily bread. He was talking of you and me, my dear, he was talking of you and me. So in a public meeting, he was going by like he left that place and he was just walking by. So that time he, uh, he just sees a public meeting there, maybe a gathering. So even they were talking about the refugees there. What were they talking about? The person who was there, the speaker who was there. So he gets up and says that if we let them in, so them meaning refugees. Okay, if the refugees are let in, what will happen? They will steal our daily bread. That means the work they are doing that will be taken away, that will be stolen by the refugees is what he says. Okay, so they will steal our daily bread. So now the speaker is able to understand who about whom the this speaker is trying to say. About whom is he trying to say? He's talking about you and me. I mean to say together refugees. So the, this you and me actually refers to all the refugees. Okay, so this is what the speaker is trying to say. So the people of this country, that is the unknown city wherein this person is caught, they are not ready to let the refugees in. The only reason they their livelihood may be taken away by these refugees. So they are very reluctant to let them in. Thought I heard the thunder rumbling in the sky. So here actually you need to understand it a little deeper. This talk, the uh, here onwards, uh, the poet talks about uh, this one, the Hitler's time, okay. Uh, thought I heard the thunder rumbling in the sky. It was Hitler over Europe saying they must die. We were in his mind, my dear, we were in his mind. So here, let me just tell you, Hitler was actually, Hitler sent his soldiers uh, telling that Jews are not uh, the pure uh, Germans. Okay, so they were not pure Germans, that, that is he wanted to have pure German race uh, to live in uh, Europe. So he, he was looking for Jews, he used to search for Jews and he used to kill them. Okay, that is the treatment uh, plans and also he used to uh, uh, take them to the, uh, and he used to execute them. Okay, he, he had some designated place wherein uh, he, they, he used to call uh, them as execution chamber. So he used to take them there and he used to kill them by some chemical treatment. So Jews were actually running for their lives. You might have heard about some diary written by Anne Frank and also all these actually are the uh, hardships that are faced by Jews and they wrote it in the form of books. So uh, they wanted the world to know how uh, cruel Hitler was. So this Hitler actually he is uh, a dictator and he was a dictator and uh, the, uh, the, these Jews wanted other people, the, that is the other part of the world to know about Hitler. That's why they used to make a note of everything and uh, this is one such uh, poem. So in order to understand this part, you need to have a sound knowledge of what Hitler was and what were the gas chambers and how Jews were treated by Hitler. So you will understand it better if you have that knowledge. Thought I heard the thunder rumbling in the sky. So here thunder rumbling, he is talking about, he is referring to Hitler. Okay, so this is actually a metaphor, he is comparing it. Okay, so thunder rumbling is nothing but Hitler. He is talking about Hitler. So he says they must die. Who does this they refer to? It is the refugees or the Jews, you can call it. Okay, so Jews were actually the refugees here. So uh, Hitler says these Jews must die. We were in his mind, my dear, we were in his mind. So we were in his mind, we means that is the refugees only. So Hitler wanted all the Jews to be killed. Saw a poodle in a jacket. So he is talking about the, uh, the difference that is shown by Germans towards the Jews. Okay, now Jews are running for their lives. They don't have a place to live in. But here, what happens? A poodle, that is a dog. Okay, do, a poodle is a breed of dog. A poodle in a jacket fastened with a pin. 
now uh, they see a, uh, they see an owner of a poodle he is trying to put a jacket he put a jacket to the uh, dog that is the pet dog and he uh, secures it with a pin so that the dog feels warm he saw a door open and a cat let in the doors were opened and the cat was let in but what about the jews what about the refugees but they weren't german jews my dear but they weren't german jews that means he is talking about the there was no place for the jews they were not jews that is the poodle and the cat they were not jews that's why they were given a place that's why they were let into the house whereas these jews since they were jews the reason they were jews they were not let into the house is what he says so here they actually means the pets he is talking about the pets the dog and the cat okay so but they weren't german jews that's why they were let in went down the harbor and stood upon the quay he goes to the uh, harbor and he just looks at the sea there saw the fish swimming as if they were free so even the fish was very free okay that also did not have any restriction it was free only 10 feet away my dear only 10 feet away so it was very near the fish was very near but it was free only reason it was not jew it had its own life to live in so he is talking about the hardships that the jews are facing over here walk through a wood that is the forest he is talking about saw the birds in the trees so he is talking about the birds that are singing freely now he is comparing the freedom that is there in the nature for the um, uh, for the uh, birds and fish or whatever it is okay so that that is the freedom that is seen in the nature and that is not there for the jews walk through a wood saw the birds in the tree they had no politicians and sang at their ease so there was no politician birds did not have any political leaders there that's why they were very free they could sing at their ease they weren't the human race they weren't humans that's the reason they were very free they did not have any caste they did not have any race they did not have any creed they did not have political polit, uh, sorry politicians in them okay that's the reason the uh, living the beings in the nature were actually very much free fish was free the dog the cat and the birds everything they were all free but they were not humans that is the main thing you need to note here the refugees were humans that's why they were not treated equally they were actually looked for and they were killed they weren't the human race my dear they weren't the human race dreamed i saw a building with a thousand floors so he is talking about his dream a thousand windows and a thousand doors no one of them was ours my dear not one of them was ours so here he is talking about a thousand doors thousand windows everywhere means there were lot of places where the doors were open but ours was not even one he says okay even in his dream he did not have a place to live in he i mean to say the refugees okay so even in the dream the refugees did not have any place to live by they had no place to uh, go there okay they had no place to have a shelter like stood on a great plain in the falling snow 10000 soldiers marched to and fro so he is talking about the uh, place where the snow was falling that means the that means uh, germany that is hitler's soldiers were walking in a place 10000 soldiers marched to and fro so they were walking to and fro i mean to say they were actually going around looking for somebody the soldiers the german soldiers were actually marching there what were they doing looking for you and me my dear looking for you and me means he is talking about uh, the german soldiers looking for the refugees or you can also say they were looking for the jews okay so this is the overall summary of the refugee blues so that word blues actually refers to the Uh, disappointment the agony that the refugees are going through so you might have heard this word uh, monday blues and all no so that uh, hangover will be there that uh, disappointment will be there you don't want to go to work but you have to go so that kind of uh, mentality that is called as blues but here refugee blues uh, blues here actually refers to literal disappointment of the refugees so let us now move on to the poetic devices that are there in this poem first thing we need to see is metaphor so metaphor is used over here so hitler's voice is metaphorically described as the rumbling that is a thunder 
okay, rumbling of the thunder, right? So that one is uh, referred to this. It is not only like uh, he there the poet is trying to evoke some fear, okay? He is trying to create some fear in the reader's mind, but also the ambient and the un sorry inescapable quality. So you cannot escape from the thunder. That is natural, and you have to listen to it. Hitler also, whatever Hitler was doing, these refugees had to undergo that. They had to face it. That is what the poet is trying to say over here. So metaphor uh, that is Hitler's voice is compared to thunder, and that is a metaphor in this poem. Next, we move on to alliteration. Alliteration, you as you already know, it's the repetition of some sound in the beginning of the word. So here you can see walk through a wood. So this W sound is repeated in the beginning of the word there. And uh, thought I heard thunder rumbling. So this third sound is actually repeated over here. Okay, so the assonance also you can say that use sound, right? So that is also repeating over here. You can also say there is assonance over here. Okay, assonance is the repetition of the vowel sounds in the words over there in the middle, you can say. Next, we have irony as this uh, speaker uh, tells us. Uh, the individuals from Adolf uh, Hitler, okay, that's the time of uh, Adolf Hitler to a citizen at a public meeting, okay, during, uh, there was a public meeting, the uh, speaker walks over there, so that time he, talk, he talks to a speaker in the public meeting. So he tells other than German Jews, they, like they were actually very powerful and they were very uh, dangerous. So they were all preoccupied by the presence of these refugees. So wherever you see there were actually, there were uh, Jews that, that, uh, who were found, but wherever they go, they were feeling like the Germans were feeling like uh, everywhere Jews are there, they might steal our daily bread. But that was not the case. So the speaker in the sense, the uh, person who is talking in the poem, not the speaker of that public meeting. Okay, so this person, he though he talks about that, he has no influence over the person over there, that is the person who is speaking. So that is the irony over there. Okay. Next we have this uh, consul, he is talking about the con consul. So this consul announces that the speaker is legally dead, that is officially he is dead in the records. Okay. So despite the presence of the speaker, that is he is living there, he himself has gone and told but that person, he says that you are officially dead. So that is the irony. Only uh, based on the records, they uh, consider that whether the person is living or he is dead. So the dog and cat next, uh, you can see that irony, the dog and cat are treated with humanity, whereas there is no humanity shown towards the humans. So this Jews do not have any place to go. The speaker has uh, thought that this, uh, this uh, he uh, seeks uh, refuge in a foreign country. Okay, the refugee who has come from another country is caught in an unknown city and he seeks refuse, refuge over there. So the new country wherein he has come in, uh, it is actually a kind of, he lives there in a kind of exclusion or he experiences cruelty. So he comes there seeking some uh, shelter or something, but there uh, he actually cannot have any shelter. So that is what the irony the poet, the speaker is facing over here. Next, we have personification that is in the ninth stanza, we have this swimming as if they were free. Okay, so you're treating that fish as a person who is free. Okay, so though it has life, we are treating it as a person. So in this uh, 10 birds are, uh, in this, uh, sorry, the 10th stanza, the birds are described singing at their ease. Okay, they are also um, th treated as humans only. So birds actually chirp, but they are treated as uh, humans uh, singing at their ease. So in that first example, that is in the ninth stanza, the fish, what he is talking about. So he is very clearly uh, mentioning that the fish only seems to be free to a human observer. Okay, the person who is standing there and observing the person, the speaker in the poem is actually standing and observing there that the fish is uh, very much free, but it, the birds are in fact mildly personified. So they are treated as humans mildly, means uh, their voice, okay, they chirp, but it is treated as a human uh, that is singing, okay. So birds do not sing, they chirp, so this way it is, it can be considered as personification. Next we have hyperbole. So uh, the numbers that are used in this uh, poem, they can be considered as hyperbole. So for example, I have mentioned over here 10 million souls or uh, the uh, 10,000 soldiers. So all these. So these are actually, uh, it, it, they can be considered as uh, hyperbole because they specify some specific amounts there. Okay. So this is hyperbole. And we have at last uh, onomatopoeia. 
So here, anamatopia, the word banged that is used in stanza 4, and that is, that is anamatopic, and the phrase thunder rumbling. So that sound, what it tells us about, okay, some sound that you feel it is realistic. So that is called as anamatopia. So here, banged, thunder rumbling. So it actually compares, it, mini, it mimics the sound of a thunder. It mimics the sound of that banging. So this kind of uh, effect that is created by the uh, speaker is called as anomatopia. So these are the poetic devices that are used over there. So overall to summarize this poem, this uh, poet that is in the climax, so this uh, poem is in, it, in its final line tells that the soldiers reach for the speaker. So the soldiers who were marching over there, they actually reach for the speaker. So, which uh, lines denote that 10,000 soldiers march to and fro looking for you, my dear, looking for you and me. That means the people who are already there, they are in front of them. The soldiers are in front of these people, that is the refugees. So, the soldiers could reach these refugees and they could uh, take, uh, maybe they, they uh, took charge of them or they took them with them or what it is, it, we don't know, but they could, the soldiers could reach the uh, refugees is what the poet says over here. So this is quite a long poem, but you need to read a little about Hitler and then go back to the poem and read. Uh, you'll be able to understand the situation better. You, you can get the uh, feel of what the poet really wants to say. So this was the summary. Please read the poem, then go through the video. Again, go back to the poem and read. You'll be able to understand it in a better way. So take care. Thank you for your time. See you soon with another important, very interesting poem. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.